Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church, especially all of you out there in TV land who are watching us via live stream or Facebook. Thank you for being with us tonight. This is, of course, our second week of reopening Masses. We're still figuring this out. But before we get to all that, happy Independence Day. And I hope you won't be kept up too late by all the fireworks tonight. I know the last one last night was about 1.30, so anyway. Um, as we gather here, a, a couple instructions for the people who are present with us here tonight. And besides celebrating the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time, this is a very special weekend for us here at Old St. Mary's. You all remember Patrick Bergen, who became Deacon Patrick Bergen, who this past Monday became Father Patrick Bergen. So Father Patrick is doing all of our Masses this weekend. We hope you'll join with us in wishing him many blessings as he leads us in our celebration tonight. So that's for all of you out here, out there, as well as all of you here. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, I want to clarify a couple things. The ushers are in charge. You do not leave the space or return to the space without the usher's help. They are your special friend. And the reason they are your special friend is they help us to know what spaces need to be cleaned afterwards to help us get ready for the next group that's going to come in. So, so just to be aware of that. At the very end of Mass, when you are dismissed, the ushers will dismiss you and just go the direction that they are leading. So they, they will dismiss the people in the back first and if you're going out the main door you come up to the front and out this aisle here you have an option of going out this aisle and going directly out that door we don't have anything going on after the mass so just we, we ask you to go straight outside those of you who would like a blessing from father patrick I didn't talk to him about this, but I meant to. He's going to have a special place outside where you'll be able to go to, uh, socially distancing from him, and get a blessing from him afterwards. But that's going to be over on the parking lot, if that's okay with you. Okay, so um, we, we didn't um, dot all the I's and cross all the T's with that. But, but that's, so that's, that's the very end of Mass. Now, communion goes like this. Again, the ushers are going to lead you forward. And we've, we've changed the setup this week. So what they are going to do is they, are, they go from the front to back, and I will be the Eucharistic minister over here, and Father Patrick will be the Eucharistic minister over here. As you come forward, if you're coming from this section, you come down the main aisle, and there when you come out of your pew, the usher will spritz your hands with sanitizer and, and just pause there a moment and then come up to the on deck or I call it an on deck circle it's the yellow circle on the floor and wait there until the priest motions for you to come so he'll motion don't be in a rush because that gives the other person behind you a chance to let their sanitizer dry so and, and just follow that way after you receive communion you receive in the hand and then there's another yellow circle you go to that yellow circle and you do what I did when I came up here. You, you lower your mask on one side and then you consume and don't move until you put the mask back in place and then you can return to your place. So that's the flow on this side. They'll do this whole section and then they'll come to you and, and do you. On this side, you're going to come out this aisle here and come forward to Patrick and it's the same procedure. So pause, sanitize, come forward, receive, go to the yellow circle, drop the mask, receive, receive, eat, and then put the mask on and return to your pews. So he'll say all that again right before communion. So hopefully that will make sense. That's what we're uh, looking forward uh, to go forward and do. Uh, the other thing that I think I said Please stay in your seats. If you need to get up or move, signal, and an usher will come to you and, and lead you to where you need to go. Okay? 
So again, welcome to our celebration tonight of Father Patrick Bergen's First Mass. Good evening. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Leslie, and Scott and I will lead the music. While only the cantor is able to sing during this phase of reopening the church, the music and the readings for this Mass can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday Worship Aid link on the front page of our parish website, (laughs) oldstmarys.com. Preaching and presiding at liturgy is Father Patrick Bergen as we celebrate his Mass of Thanksgiving. Our gathering song is Lift Every Voice and Sing, verses 1 and 3. Every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound. The dark past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun Of our new day begun Let us march on till victory God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who hast brought us thus far on the way, Thou who hast thy thy might, led us into the light, keep us forever. the places our God where we met thee lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadowed beneath thy hand may we forever stand true to our God true to our native land name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, what a day of joy and gratitude this is for me to be here with you all and to celebrate my first Mass. I'm so grateful to God, so grateful to all of you here at Old St. Mary's. Before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of my mother, Angela Bergen, um, and one of my sisters, Kate Bergen, and other family members are going to be joining some of the Masses tomorrow. I'd also like to thank Father Brad, who was with me Monday, invested me in the Chasuble for the first time after the uh, Cardinal ordained. Um, 
And so now, my friends, as we gather for worship, let us ponder the loving kindness of our God. Lord Jesus, you proclaim peace to the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you offer rest to the weary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. sins of the world receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. For you alone are the pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim, 
and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are labored and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Fourth of July weekend, exactly five years ago. I decided to take a trip down memory lane. I had been working in my office at the African Wildlife Foundation in Nairobi, Kenya. But since it was a long weekend and I was feeling nostalgic, I took a few days off to travel to neighboring Tanzania and to go back to the town of Tabora where I had served as a Peace Corps volunteer some 25 years earlier. I landed at Tabora's small rural airstrip. Fortunately, there was a taxi waiting there. I asked the driver to go past the cathedral before heading to my hotel so I could check mass times. When we got to the cathedral, there was a crew of workers putting up large tents like you would for a big party or a wedding. And I asked them what was going on. And they told me that they were preparing for an upadrisho the next day. 
And upadrisho, in Swahili, is literally the making of a padre, or in other words, an ordination. I asked if I could attend, and they told me, of course, any Christian is welcome. And actually, it all begins tonight with Vespers, evening prayer. Well, that weekend and those events were to cause my life to take a dramatic turn. In good African style, the Mass was almost four hours long. Several times, such as during the Litany of Saints, I was fighting back tears. Watching the man being ordained, I was seized with what you might call holy envy. In my heart, I knew that God had also called me to be a priest, and that despite any other type of worldly success, I would never truly be happy or content. And indeed, I would always have an underlying sense of grief and loss if I did not respond even at this late hour. The next day, I ran into some of the young seminarians of the archdiocese walking around in their cassocks. They easily recognized me from the ordination, having been the only white person in the church. They were very friendly and showed me around. And I started asking coy and innocent questions like, what's it like to study in seminary? And when did you first know you had a vocation to the priesthood? I share that at some point in my youth, I had considered the priesthood, but that I now had a rewarding career in wildlife conservation. I stayed in touch with these young seminarians on social media. And a few months later, one of the braver ones texted me a message like, Patrick, who do you think you're fooling? You still feel called to be a priest. The deepest desire of your heart is still to be a priest. I was stunned and a little defensive, and I responded, How could you know that? I have never said that. And he replied, Patrick, It is written all over your face. We seminarians knew it from the first day we met you. We pray for you constantly, and we've just been waiting for you to figure it out. You know, here in the USA, we are struggling with this deep social and structural sin of racism, and I bear some of this guilt, as most of us do. And yet, in the charmed and beautiful life that God has given me, there are many amazing reversals. We think of the stereotype of the older, well-educated white man being a mentor or big brother to struggling young black men. But for me, for the last five years, my mentors are young black men, priests half my age. And they have been patiently guiding and encouraging me. They are my wisdom figures. We think of missionaries going out from Europe or the US to evangelize Africa. But it is Africa that has evangelized me. During this time, I would pray over and over again, Lord, is this really what you want me to do? Is it even possible at my age? Is this you speaking, or am I having a midlife crisis? And the Holy Spirit would consistently answer me, I have placed this desire in you. You do your part, and I'll do mine. The details of the future are on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, and it will work out beautifully. Together, we have got this. And so here we are again, the 4th of July weekend, five years later. And by the grace of God, and with wonderful care and encouragement from so many, archbishops and abbots, professors and priests, support from my family in this parish, and my secret weapon, 
prayers from wonderful congregations of nuns on both continents. I'm here today to celebrate my first Mass with you as priest. The readings this Sunday of Ordinary Time are promise, hope, and joy. They are simply the good news. The prophets frequently gave dire warnings, but Zechariah says, Rejoice heartily, shout for joy, see, your king shall come. He describes the coming of the Lord as being meek, gentle, subtle, riding on an ass, and yet having dominion from sea to sea. We are invited to see Jesus riding into our lives, subtly, without fanfare, but holding sway in our hearts. In his gospel, Matthew frequently invokes wailing and the gnashing of teeth. But in today's reading, we have one of the most gentle, comforting, and inviting portrayals of Jesus as true liberator. Our vocations, whether as married or single people, priests or religious, are not meant to be drudgery and constraining, but rather give us the freedom to be our truest selves. Jesus invites us to find rest and refreshment in him, a lightness of heart and a sense of ease. The one common word linking the first reading and the gospel is meek. Ours is not an in-your-face God who overwhelms us with power and demands, but a God who gently invites us. Yoke yourself to me. You do your part, and I'll be right beside you, doing my part. Trust and put one foot in front of the other. Together, we have got this. Sisters and brothers, let's stand and recommit ourselves to our faith by remembering the promises we made at baptism. Please respond, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Many in our world are in need of comfort that comes only from God. Let us pause now and call to mind those who long for the presence of the Lord. That the church will continue to be a place where those who are heavily burdened may come for peace and refreshment. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Comfort and bring healing to all those whose lives have been affected by continuing acts of violence by guns. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the anniversary of our nation's independence, open our hearts in greater love for all who call the United States their home, citizens, immigrants, and those seeking asylum, asylum we pray. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Patrick Bergen, who was ordained priest this week. May the Lord, who has begun good work in him, see it to fulfillment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who care for them, we pray. 
for those who have died will know the eternal light of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. With the intentions of Joseph, Seliga, and Vanessa Vergara, and are all their intentions, we hold in prayerful silence. We pray. Hear us in our need, O God of peace, and answer the prayers that are deep within our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because we're not able to gather your financial offerings in the usual way, please drop them in one of the metal boxes mounted on the wall near the baptismal font when you depart today. And for those of you joining us from home, please mail your contributions to the parish office or donate online by clicking the Give button on the parish website. And as always, thank you for your generosity to the Ministry of Old St. Mary's. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this be sacrifice. Praise for our good and good of all His holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, 
is without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done, done, on earth earth as as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us us our trespasses, trespasses, as we we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. Lead us us not not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now, in some appropriate way, offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
We pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, 
we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. First of all, on behalf of all the Paulus Fathers, the entire parish staff, I want to wish each one of you and each of you out there in Cyberland a very blessed and insightful Independence Day holiday and a safe holiday. Be blessed in all of that. Also, uh, thank you for joining us once again for our evening Saturday night mass. Uh, we know that some people are beginning to come and, and help us with reopening. We've, we know we have a long way to go, so please do what feels safe for you as we continue forward. So thank you for joining us in cyberspace and those of you who joined us here today. A reminder that all of our masses, even as we go forward, will be live streamed at oldstmaries.com, and they're also available for viewing on our Facebook uh, Facebook page as well. You'll also find that online there is the bulletin for each week, as well as ways that you can contribute to the parish, as well as ways that you can volunteer. Now one of the things that is important, uh, we are not able to open up the 6 p.m. Sunday night mass yet because we don't have the volunteers, so until we have that we won't be able to move forward with that. But in terms of the weekday masses, what we are looking for now are volunteers to help us with the weekday masses. If we get volunteers in the course of this week, we look to begin weekday masses in the public again, beginning on the 13th. So just uh, this week, if you're interested, contact the parish office and we'll tell you what, what we need in particular for volunteers. So take a look at that. Um, Reminder also that because of how we are reopening, there is limited attendance from week to week. As we get more people knowledgeable, as we have more volunteers in place, we'll be able to open it up larger. So take a look at that. Also look at the guidelines that are posted on the parish website that, that tell you what all we have to do. Okay. Second of all, on behalf of all the Paulist Fathers, especially those who have served here in recent years, Father Steve and Father Stu, as well as Father PJ, myself, and all of the entire parish staff, we want to thank, uh, on behalf of all of you, uh, on, be on behalf of all of us, and on behalf of all of you, we want to thank Patrick for his presence with us these past two years in very many different ways. He has been a, a great exemplar of Christ's love and faith to all those he's instructed, as well as all those he's worked with. So we thank him. We ask God's continued blessing on him as he goes forward in his ministry. We look to many connections between Chicago and Tanzania in the future, once we get by all this virus stuff. So on behalf of the entire parish and on behalf of all of you, thank you, Patrick, for all you And, and as I said to him, maybe you'd like to say a few words. Patrick. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Father Brad. And I'd also just like to say thank you so much to Old St. Mary's. You know, from the first day I walked through the doors, the Paulus Fathers welcomed me warmly as a colleague. I sort of took me under their arm because my diocese is far away in Africa. And, and really, this parish has helped form me as a minister and as a preacher, the opportunities to preach. Um, and to get to know you and to work with RCA. So I thank everybody, the Paulist Fathers, the, uh, the Parish Council, the staff, the, the parishioners, um, just everybody who's, who's encouraged me uh, and continues to encourage me. A couple people have asked. Um, I am hoping maybe to leave for Tanzania on August 2nd. I have a, uh, a deacon, a friend of mine, who's finishing his studies in Rome and is to be ordained on the Feast of the Transfiguration, August 6th. And I would love to be there, and they want me to be there if at all possible, but it depends on God and Turkish Airways um, in that order. So um, I, I hope to maybe leave. I also want to say, again, 
uh, may be imposing on your generosity, I now consider this my home parish in the United States. Um, and I'll be back to visit my family once a summer, and I hope there might be opportunities, Father Brad, to come and pray with you um, uh, in the future. So, um, again, thank you very much, and God bless you all, and happy Fourth of July. Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go and announce the good news. Thanks be to God. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You are speaking truth to power. You are laying down our swords. Replanting every vineyard till a brand Fires burning with a quiet light. You are mothering and feeding in the wee hours of the night. Your gentle love is patient. You will never feed or tire. Glory.